So what do we need to do to manage these problems? We need to move on from mitigation, that is avoiding the use of fossil fuels. We, we must talk about climate restoration. Mitigation is the first priority. But the second priority is create more carbon sinks. We have to pull carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. And it's certainly my belief that we actually need to manage these risks through this century and into the next, we need to pull it down to about 350 parts per million. And in order to, to achieve that, we're going to have to create a whole set of new carbon dioxide sinks. I'm not simply talking about reforestation or mangroves. These are very important carbon sinks. But we also need to look at the oceans, for example. Russ George is with us here, and he's very keen to talk about iron fertilization in the deep ocean to create carbonaceous matter that will sink down several miles to the bottom of the ocean. So the objective of the climate restoration program is to attempt to restore the planet to a situation it was in in the pre-1950 level. If we just remember what we learned through the Brundtland uh, report on sustainability, it was leave the planet in a state that is at least as good as the state it was in when you arrived. And I'm, I'm an old guy. I was born in 1939. So I've got to say it's got to be 1950 or earlier that we return to. When we are emitting 50 plus billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent into the air every year. Yes. And yet that number is increasing year on year. So globally, we've got to hit net zero by 2050 or before. Right. And that is not enough. So the second part of the Climate Clear Center's objectives are to work on the techniques that will enable us to bring down the level of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere to a much more manageable range, which I would say is less than 350 parts per million. And currently we're at 415. So that's one of our objectives, yep. is to sort out the technology. I wanted to draw the attention first, because you have previously mentioned the oceans as a, as a part of the, the yep. climate system. Um, can you talk a bit? Is that still in the mix? Is that still something? Very much so. Okay. Very much so. And if, in fact, there's a group of us communicating around the world yes. on this issue and working out exactly what is needed. So yeah. let me give you the latest information on how the group is developing. The paper is not published yet. So okay. Not really in the public domain. In essence, uh, the oceans are probably down to something like 10% of living things compared with where they were 100 years ago. We have been very destructive of the state of the oceans. And so one possibility is to fix that at the same time as removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. And that is, this is really by greening the oceans. Yeah. There are two ways of greening the oceans. The one is in shallower waters around coastlines, for example, on the Californian coast. There used to be a lot of seaweed and kelp. That's been removed because it gets in the way of shipping. Right. Now, seaweed and kelp, green matter, takes carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. It's like a, an ocean forest. It yes. creates a living system. And yet we've been getting rid of them. We've also been poisoning the coastlines by putting our waste into the oceans. Right. So. Regreening the oceans means learning from nature. One of the issues, and, and you can see this in uh, David, David Attenborough's films, is when the, when the wind blows over the Sahara Desert and it's heading towards the Atlantic Ocean, it can pick up very small sand dust particles into the, into the atmosphere, carry them over thousands of miles and dump them into the ocean when the wind stops blowing. Yes. And where that happens, as Attenborough very clearly shows, you rapidly get a greening of the ocean. So the iron in the sand, we now understand the science behind this, catalyzes the formation of chlorophyll. And then all of the small beasties of the ocean 
the, starting with the beginning of the food chain that eats the green matter, yeah. these forest the ocean with living matter within months, so that it becomes millions of fish in a few thousand square kilometers of space, which has been greened by this process. Our estimate is that if we were to do that to 3% of the world's deep oceans, we would be soaking up about 10 billion tons of greenhouse gases per annum. Right. So I think, now people say, what's the cost of that? I actually think we can charge for the fishing rights in these regions. And if we do that, we're going to much more than cover the cost. Yeah, okay. And now what, what we do have to worry about with that, and this is what the climate change, the repair center will work on. Yes. Is, is there any negative impact? Are we going to see, for example, what happens in your fish pond when it greens over, the fish go belly up because when the green matter dies, it oxidizes, uh, takes the oxygen out of the water, and so the fish can't live. I don't believe that's going to happen, and we've got evidence for this, but we've got to really delve into the science deeply. And you mentioned a figure, which is 10 billion tons, 3% of the ocean. Is 3% the, ba the boundary of no. the maximum. No. So that's it's just just a. That's just an illustration. It gives you an to, idea to get to the ten billion tons. Because there's been a lot of talk recently around negative emission technologies, and a lot of the numbers, when you actually look at the scale of the problem, don't really make it outside the lab, or you know, you can see what I mean. Um, this seems like an area that does have scale on its side. Yes. And, and we have declared we are only going to look at those technologies that are scalable. And by scalable, we mean a billion tons of carbon dioxide equivalent per annum. Right? So there's the minimum level we're going to be looking at.